let alone fill it out. I spent the whole weekend pouring my heart out about why I should be chosen to win the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship. And I asked questions like, tell me about your community service. And I talked about up with people and all the years of traveling all over the world and going to third world countries and volunteering. I talked about my, my freshman year at East Carolina. My roommate was a guy named Chad Harris. He uh, was a big partier, and one night he decided to drink a little too much, and he was pledging my fraternity and, and uh, dove off a, a dock at the University Lake that was forbidden to swim in and dove off to about four or five feet of shallow water and cracked his neck and became a quadriplegic. And I wrote in this application how I lived with Chad for four years of my five years at East Carolina. I, didn't, I never thought I would ever live with a quadriplegic and help him shower and go to the bathroom and turn the pages of his textbook, but that kid changed my life. And when we graduated East Carolina for a graduation present, his parents bought he and I year old passes to go to the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. And myself and a quadriplegic went to 16 countries all over Europe, backpacking. I just poured my heart out how my parents were Catholics, wanted to have a big family, and I had a couple miscarriages, and late-term miscarriages, and my mom wanted to have more kids, so decided to adopt a little girl from Korea, and how cool that was, going to JFK Airport at seven years old to pick up my sister on an airplane at JFK Airport, and how incredible that was, growing up with a little girl that looked different than me. And I just poured my heart in an application of why I should be chosen to be this Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship, and how I want to serve Rotary, get an MBA, and make a difference in the world. And after spending the whole week in filling this application, the last question said, what's your GPA? <laughs> My heart sunk because then in little parentheses, it said 4.0 required. And I just said, oh my God, I spent the whole weekend filling this application. If I knew you needed a 4.0, I wouldn't have wasted my time. So if I filled it out already, I might as well submit it. So I wrote what was required, 4.0. I wrote 4.0. And I put a little asterisk next to the 4.0. In the back of the application, I wrote, Dear Sir or Ma'am of the Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship Committee, if you took my high school GPA and you added it to my college GPA, I had a 4.0. <laughs> and I sent it in. I thought maybe someone would have some humor, you know, that got my application. I didn't think that I was going to get a letter. But a couple months later, I got a letter from this Japanese postman that delivered 37 rejection letters. He gave me a thin letter from Rotary International, and I thought for sure it would be another rejection letter. But it was a letter saying that of 800 of some of the top college graduates in America, that I was one of 10 people chosen to interview to be a Rotary ambassadorial scholar. And will I come to New York in two months to, for an interview? I remember calling my dad up and saying, well, as soon as they get my transcript and learn that I didn't really have a 4.0, they're not going to appreciate my humor. Plus, Dad, I don't have any money because I spent all my money on these damn law school applications. So I borrowed $1,000 from my dad, and he encouraged me to go to this interview and just look people in the eye and say, I'm Tommy Spall, and I want to change the world, and I want to be a Rotary Scholar. So I borrowed that money, I flew home, rented a car up JFK, I went up upstate New York, a little town called Peekskill, New York, changing my coat and tie. I'm nervous, I'm jet lagged, I'm exhausted. I walk into this little Italian restaurant and there was very distinguished Rotarians there shaking each other's hands and there was nine other candidates that had name badges that said MIT and Dartmouth and Harvard and Vanderbilt, all these schools in my son, East Carolina University. I was so intimidated. And the chairman of the Rotary Committee asked the 10 candidates to wait in the bar area, and they were going to choose us one by one in the banquet room to interview us about 30 minutes. So my last name was Spaulding, so I did the math. I had about a three and a half hour wait. So I started talking to some of the other people, because when I get nervous, I talk. And so I started talking to these other Ivy League snots. And um, <laughs> no one was talking to anybody. This was the most stuck up group of people I've ever met. Everyone spread out in different parts of the bar waiting for their name to be called, getting their tie ready, studying their notes, getting their resume read. This was a $50,000 scholarship. There was one winner, so this was very competitive. So if these guys aren't going to talk to me, and I had a three and a half hour wait, and I'm in a bar, I might as well go up there and get a drink, right? So I went up to the bar and ordered a Diet Coke and started talking to the bartender. Well, it turns out this bartender is a fourth generation owner of this restaurant that came over from Italy from his great-great-grandfather, and I started talking to this guy. And he did me the biggest favor because I was so nervous for this interview and my name to be called. We talked for three and a half hours. 
I mean, he had yearbooks out and photo albums out and met his wife and his little five or six-year-old kid running behind the drive, the fifth generation owner. I mean, I got to know this whole story of his life story, how passionate he was about this restaurant and this grandma sauce and this whole thing. I mean, three and a half hours went like this, just asking him questions. When Aiden got called, I went into the interview. I sat down, 10 distinguished Rotarians at the end of the table, very intimidating, drilling me with questions. And I did my best to answer them with humility and honesty. I shared my heart about how I want to change the world and my experiences with, up with people. And some people in the committee really didn't appreciate my two plus two is four humor because they got my transcripts from East Carolina and saw that I graduated the 2.0. And I talked about my dyslexia for the first time and I talked about how hard I want to work and how I want to overcome this obstacle and I want to get an MBA and I want to change the world. So the story goes at the end of the day, they dismissed the 10 candidates. We all went home. I heard the story a few months later. It's actually chapter two in my book. And the committee voted. After interviewing 10 candidates, they narrowed it down to two people. Five people on the committee, half of the committee, wanted this girl from Harvard University, a graduate Maga cum laude. She was actually the runner-up for the award last year that came back to win it this year. And her dream was to go to University of Cape Town in South Africa, get an MBA in Cape Town University, and after that she wanted to raise six or seven million dollars in venture capital funds and open small AIDS clinic throughout rural South Africa. I mean, how do you beat that? And then five people on the committee really saw the heart and the passion for Tommy Spaulding. He's not the smartest kid in the world. His grades aren't great. But the kid loves people. We should give it to him. So five people for Spaulding, five people for Harvard, five people for Spaulding, five people for Harvard. They were debating back and forth, back and forth. And they, did, they voted three times, five and five, five and five, five and five. And finally, the chairperson says, we're going to have one last vote. Someone's going to change your vote. We've been in this room for eight hours, we're exhausted, and we voted one last time. And five people raised their hands for Harvard, and five people raised their hands for Tommy Spaulding. The chairman gets frustrated, looks at his watch, and says, let's take a break. Tell you what, let's go to the bar and get a drink, and we'll talk about it. So these 10 Rotarians get up, they walk over to the bar, the bartender who I spent the whole afternoon with pours them all drinks. Before you know it, it's like a Miller Lite commercial. Tastes great, less filling, tastes great, Spalding, Harvard, Spalding. I mean, they're debating at the top of the line who should win this award. And finally, the chairman says, okay, it's time to vote one last time. Again, five for Spalding, five for Harvard, dead tie. Chairman's defeated, his head's down. He looks up and sees the bartender and has this brilliant idea. Hey, Mr. Bartender, you were in the room the entire day. Who do you think should win the $50,000 Rotary Ambassadorial Scholarship? You must have met all the 10 candidates. The bartender said, I didn't meet any of the other nine candidates. That Tommy Spaulding kid, he came up to the bar, ordered a Diet Coke. That kid talked to me for three and a half hours. The nicest, genuine kid. The bartender was a deciding vote, and I won the $50,000 scholarship. Oh, I love that story. 